Let's talk about multiplication and division of fractions. Um, in, in a lot of ways, this is easier than adding and subtracting fractions because you remove the whole finding a common denominator step. Um, the the uh, difficulty with this is not confusing the different algorithms for solving fractions problems. So when we multiply two fractions, so let's take something simple like one-half times one-third. Um, the, the algorithm for this is that we, we multiply the numerators and the multiply the denominators. I always think it's helpful to think about why things work. So if we think about a representation of one-half, um, like that, the shaded area in green. If I divided this into thirds, um, and then I take one third of that one half, uh, you'll, you'll notice that the part where it's, they're both overlapping is one sixth of the, t of the whole. Um, and a way to think about this is that when you multiply something by a fraction, um, you end up with more parts, just like in regular multiplication, but the parts are getting smaller. So let's take another example where that's a little clearer, perhaps. The What if it was, instead uh, of one-half times one-third, what if it was one-half times, or rather, three-fourths times two-thirds? This will show what I'm talking about. Uh, again, let's draw it. I'm just going to draw my hole a little bigger here, um, so I can draw fourths, first of all. So three-fourths would be represented like this. Um, now, what is two-thirds of that? So, um, you know, it's like two-thirds of a copy of three-fourths. So I've now divided it into thirds going the other way, and two-thirds would be shown like this. So the area where they are both is right there. Um, what's the size of the pieces that we have? Well, uh, those are twelfths. Uh, it's a three by four array. And I have six of those pieces. So it's six twelfths. Now it's always a good idea to simplify. And you might notice that if we rearrange, uh, for example, these two sections that I'm pointing at here, when we move them up here, you would have it divided neatly in half. Um, six twelfths is an equivalent fraction to one half. Um, so let's talk about algorithms for a minute. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend doing a lot of this drawing on something like the state test, particularly with the multiple choice questions. Um, so the algorithm for any multiplication of fractions problems problem uh, is it, simply that you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators so two sevenths uh, two fifths times seven tenths becomes fourteen fiftieths and simplification or reducing is basically accomplished by recognizing common factors with the numerator and the denominator um, and then dividing both by that factor. So I know that 14 and 15 are even numbers, um, and that means that 2 is a factor of them. Um, so 14 divided by 2 is 7. 50 divided by 2 is 25. Uh, 7 25ths can't be uh, simplified any further. Uh, 7 is prime number, and 25, uh, fact is, is, it, 7 is not a factor of 25. Uh, the, the stronger you are with your multiplication facts, the easier recognizing opportunities to simplify will be. Um, something I've noticed, though, is that peop some people run into errors by trying to simplify where they can't. You cannot always simplify. So, for example, in, in this um, problem, 
if you tried to simplify it, say, by dividing by 7, you'd end up with 1 and then something. Uh, 25 divided by 7 is a, is a fractional num uh, number or a decimal number. Um, and there's nothing illegal mathematically about having a, a decimal number in your fraction, but we've talked about some of the reasons that's, that it complicates things, and it's just hard to understand what that means. So if you're at a point like this, um, don't try to continue to simplify. And if you can't find anything to simplify, uh, you can't find a common factor to simplify with, then um, just stop there. It's better to um, stop where you're sure that you have a correct answer than to wander on and maybe do something wrong. Um, th that's basically it for multiplication of fractions. Uh, the, the one other complicating factor is that sometimes you're going to have a mixed number. So here I have 1 and 1 half times 2 and 2 sevenths. Uh, th th this is an area where I've, I've seen a lot of errors happen. Um, really, my number one strategy for dealing with mixed numbers is to turn them into uh, improper fractions. So that would be 3 halves times, well, uh, 2 is equal to 14 sevenths, because there's 7 sevenths in each whole, so that is 16 sevenths. Uh, 3 halves times 16 sevenths, well, it's some number of 14ths. And 3 times 16, well, 3 times 10 is 30. Uh, 3 times 6 is 18, so that's 48. It's 48 14ths. 14 isn't a factor of 48, um, but uh, we can simplify that. They are, again, both even. Um, and it's not that you can only simplify when numbers are even, but that is a, um, a surefire one. Um, now, what do I do now? I have 24 sevenths. I'm going to turn, I want to turn that back into, uh, a mixed number just to make this a little more understandable. Uh, I recognize that three goes into, uh, seven goes into 24 three times. That'd be 21, and I would have 3 sevenths left over. I could have also done that using long division, like so. Uh, 24 divided by 7 goes in 3 times. 21, 3, 3 sevenths. Because that remainder here is then divided by 7, and that's another way of uh, referring to a fraction. Um, now, it, there are there is a way to deal with these mixed numbers directly, but you really have to use the area model. And what you have to recognize is that this is 1 plus 1 half, and then it's times 2 plus 2 sevenths, because we've talked a lot about how mixed numbers are a shortcut way of adding a whole number and a fraction. It is beyond the scope of the fifth grade curriculum to know how to multiply this directly. Um, you'll learn about this later on in school, how to deal with this just as it is. Uh, the, the one method that we have learned to deal with a problem like this is by using the area model. And I'm going to demonstrate it to you, uh, but I would only recommend this if you feel solid with the area model. So we have 1 and 2, and then it was 2 plus 2 sevenths, and 1 plus 1 half, like that. And then you can find all of your partial products and then add them up. So uh, 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 sevenths is 2 sevenths. 2 times 1 half is 1. And 2 sevenths times 1 half is 2 fourteenths, uh, a.k.a. 1 seventh. And uh, you might recognize that right away because 1 half of 2 sevenths is 1 seventh. And multiplication is another way of thinking about it that word of. So now we have all these partial products and I see here we have 3 plus, well that would be 3 sevenths, wouldn't it? 3 and 3 sevenths, is that what we said over here? Yeah, you'll notice that those are equal. Um, the great thing about math is that none of it is magical even if sometimes it feels like it. Um, all the pieces fit together. Uh, if they don't, it's a, a clue that we've made a mistake. Um, 
So let's move on to division. I've said it before, but it bears repeating that division of fractions is conceptually probably the most difficult thing that we do in fifth grade. Um, it takes most people years to really get their mind around this. Um, many adults struggle with what it means to divide uh, with or by a fraction. Um, you, you, we're going to learn how to solve these problems. I'm going to try to explain why it works. Um, but, you know, if, if this is something that is a little bit confusing, you know, that, that's normal and natural. This is a confusing idea. So let's start with the one that's perhaps a little bit easier to understand, the case where we take a fraction and, whoops, I wrote plus, and we divide it by a whole number. Well, when we divide something by a whole number, we're dividing up into more parts. So let's picture this as a tape diagram. And if the whole tape diagram is one half, and I divide it into four pieces, how big is each piece? That is what this is asking me. So how do we know? Well, let's think about a hole. So I'm going to extend this into an imaginary hole here. So if this whole thing is worth one, which it now does, how many... Uh, how big is that question mark piece? How many of pe pieces like that would it take to make one whole? Well, you'll notice that there are eight of them. Um, so that tells me that each piece is one-eighth. Now, this is pretty straightforward because you just have to think about what fractions mean. Um, and when you divide say, a, a whole, two whole numbers, um, and you end up with a fractional amount, let's say, for example, in this case, 1 divided by 4 equals 1 fourth. Um, it, it, we're doing the same thing as when we do 1 half divided by 4. We're just starting with a smaller piece. Uh, the, the algorithm for this is that you, if, if you take a uh, fraction and you divide it by a whole number, they, really what you end up doing is you, you multiply the denominator um, by the whole number that you're dividing by. Um, but we're going to extend, we're going to keep moving here, and we're going to create an algorithm that works for all division problems. So let's take a look at the other big case that you're going to have to encounter. And that's where you take a whole number, or a fraction, and you divide it by a fraction. So 3 divided by 1 sixth. This is the thing that really makes our brains want to just give up on math. Um, <laughs> this is where it gets really confusing. What does it mean to divide by a fraction? When we divide by a whole number, we're dividing something into pieces, um, into a number of pieces, but here it's not even dividing it into two pieces. It's dividing it into a number of pieces that are smaller than one. What does that mean? And there's two ways to think about what it means. One of them is to say if I take the number 3 here, if the 3 is my whole, how many 1 sixths make it? If I divide it into pieces that are 1 sixth big, because that's one of the ways to think about all division problems. It's, let's say I had 4 divided by 2. I could be dividing 4 into two parts. I'm, I could also be asking, how many groups of 2 can I make out of 4? And so I could be saying, how many 1 sixths can I make out of 3? So if I divide this first into ones, that's one, two, three, and then each one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, those are, each one is now divided into six pieces. Um, how many can I make? Well, if you count them up, you'll see that there are 18. Um, and I knew that quickly because in each one, there were six of them. Um, now, what do you notice? Here we have this curious property that we've, what it looks like we've done is we've multiplied the whole number by the denominator of the fraction. Um, and, and that's true. There's another way to think about this problem, though. And that's to say that just like with multiplication, if we said uh, 3 times 1 sixth, it's, uh, or one, it's 1 sixth of 3, when we do 3 divided by 1 sixth, we could also be saying 3 is 1 sixth of what number? So if we have our 3 here and... Two, three, 
four, five, six. Well, then we have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Again, it shows us that this equals eighteen. Now, that's a lot to wrap your mind around. Um, it's helpful for when you encounter these sorts of concepts in a word problem to understand why this works or how this works or what we're talking about. But there is an algorithm that will work for all division problems. And uh, it's especially helpful if, if we happen to encounter something where both numbers are fractions. If I said 1 half divided by 1 fourth, it's like I'm saying how many 1 fourths fit into 1 half. How many 1 fourth size groups make 1 half? Well, this is an easy one. Um, we can just use mental math to recognize that it's 2. But let me show you the algorithm. Every division problem is, can be translated to a multiplication problem where we multiply our whole, one half in this case, um, also known as the dividend, um, if we, if we turn that into a factor where the other factor is the inverse of the divisor of the division problem. So inverse just means flipped upside down or opposite. So the inverse of one fourth is four because when I flip it upside down, it becomes four divided by one, four once, if you will. Um, so what happens then when we multiply this? Um, we multiply the numerators, we multiply the denominators, we have four halves. Four halves is the same thing as four divided by two, which equals two. Um, this algorithm works for any kind of division problem, um, even simple whole number division. If I take 9 divided by 3, I can turn it into a multiplication problem where I take the inverse of the divisor. The inverse of 3 is 1 third. 9 times 1 third is 9 thirds, which equals 3. Um, you already knew that 9 divided by 3 equals 3, but it proves my point. Um, this, this can work with any sort of problem. So I could take something like 2 thirds divided by, let's make it hard, 7 eighteenths. That's a weird thing to think about. How many copies of 7 eighteenths fit, in, fit into 2 thirds? Who knows? So let's use the algorithm. Um, so that would be 2 thirds. I multiply by the inverse of the divisor, so that's 18 sevenths. I multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, so that becomes 36 twenty once. Um, and can I simplify? Well, looks like I can. Um, 3 is a factor of 36, because 3 times 12 is 36, and 3 is a factor of 21. Um, so I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 3. To simplify, you always have to do the same thing to the numerator as you do to the denominator, because really what we're do dividing by is 1 here. It's 3 thirds. Um, and so that becomes 12 sevenths. Now I can simplify pretty easily. Uh, 7 goes into 12 once, and there are 5 sevenths left over. So starting off there, I said 2 thirds divided by 7 eighteenths turns out to be 1 in 5 sevenths. Um, and it's not an unreasonable answer when you, when you think about it. Um, how, how many copies of 7 eighteenths would go into 2 thirds? Well, 2 thirds is a little bit bigger than 7 eighteenths because 2 thirds would be 12 eighteenths. Uh, so, and what we came up with is a little bit more than 1 and a half. That seems pretty reasonable. Um, so what is my point with all this? There are two things really you need to know about division, and, and one of them is basically what are we doing um, when we think about this, because this way you'll recognize when they appear in word problems. Um, and the, the second thing to know is just how to solve it. Um, 
One of the nice things about division, particularly division of fractions, is that when you encounter it in a word problem, chances are you won't even recognize it as the division problem. You'll just think about it immediately as multiplication and see the multiplication way to solve it. Um, but we just do need to know these things and know how to uh, do it if we're just posed with a division problem uh, or asked to use division to solve it. And, and this is basically it. Uh, if you have questions, please let me know. I know this is confusing stuff. All right, have a good week.